All right, time for some friendly fire. Jason Whitlock, Jamika Michelle, Jamika and Jason. Jamika, uh, I have a video I want to play you of a young uh, damsel in distress. She's crying about her nine to five job. Uh, I can't wait to hear your reaction. Let's play the video. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college and I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me forever to get there. There's no way I'm gonna be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table, like duh. If I was able to walk to work and it would be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me, like I leave here, like I get on the train at 7.30 and I don't get home till like 6.15 earliest. And then like, I don't have time to do anything. I don't, I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Like, I don't have energy to work out. Like, that's out the window. Like, I'm so upset. Oh, my God. Nothing to do with my job at all. But just, like, the 9 to 5 schedule in general is crazy. Being in the office 9 to 5, like, if it was remote, you get off at 5 and you're home and everything's fine. But, like, I'm not home. It takes me long to get home. And, like, like people that drive to the office like it doesn't you don't get off at five and i know it could be worse i know i could be working longer but like i literally get off it's pitch black like i don't have energy how do you have friends like how do you have time to like meet like a guy i don't know like how do you have time for like dating like i don't have time for anything and i'm like so stressed out and i'm also getting my period so that's why i'm all emotional but like am i so dramatic it's fine uh Shamika, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. I, I, I'm somewhat defensive of this woman and, and because she's outside of her role, but I'm gonna defer to you initially. What are you, what are you seeing here? Well, first of all, I do understand about getting your period. It can make you very emotional. So yes, I thought her delivery was dramatic, but I'm glad that she gave us a, an excuse for it. You know, I totally feel her. I hated working, but it was something that I had to do at the time because that's kind of how society told us it was going to go. You graduate high school, you go to college, you get a career, you get a job. But it's crazy because even at 18, when people would ask me, what are you in school for? And I would say, well, my major is biology. I want to be a doctor, but really, I want to be a housewife. And so I always knew knew that I didn't want to be working 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. I would rather be at home. And a lot of people think that that's not work. It is. And so that's why she doesn't have the energy to come home and cook and have friends. Because once you're holding a job outside of the house, you can't do those things in the house as effectively as you could if you were home. When I was at home with the kids, I was able to start dinner a little earlier. I was able to put in a load of clothes while the kids were taking a nap. You know, that was just the way it was. If you're away from the house for eight to 10 hours, when you get home, you're exhausted. You don't want to continue doing those things that you could have done at home like it was a nine to five, but we uh, condition women to think that being at home is not good enough. And so they're getting out here and they're working. And like you said, it's against nature and they can't figure out why they're so unhappy. That's why, be at home, get you a man. It's also, you're, when you do a job or get involved in corporate America or a job or whatever, you're taking on someone else's burdens and responsibilities and giving yourself a whole new set of problems that maybe you're just not that passionate about. And so, yeah, it pays my bills, but I really don't have a passion for whatever the inner office politics are at Ford Motor Company or IBM or wherever you're working, you know, yeah, it pays the bills, but I'm really, I don't care about Joe the, the guy in the next cube over who I have to work with. And so I watched this video and many, many things run through my head and about how far we've moving away from a traditional family structure. I think about my mother uh, growing up and she lived in her grandmother's house, mm. grandparents' house. Her grandmama and granddaddy were both there. 
Uh, my grandmother, Lovey Kennedy, she did get a divorce, but she lived in that house too and worked. And so but there was a whole, and we've moved completely away from that structure because if things were working properly, our grandparents would probably at some point come live in our house. We would be married. We would have kids. And the grandparents actually would take part of the load of, you know, I'm retired now. I can cook dinner. You know, I can do this or do that. And, and, and this isn't about the woman going off into the workforce, but if, if our family structure was back in line, we'd be shocked at how much help we actually had and how much more affordable things would actually be. Your parents are living with you. They got a retirement income, whether it be Social Security or maybe they saved a little something. You're not having to, again, when your parents live off someplace and they may get older, you may be paying their bills in that other house rather than them being in your house, helping it run more effectively. Anyway, it's, the whole system is out of whack. And I look at this young woman and, and she's stressed. She's got anxiety issues. She's overburdened because our entire family structure has broken down. Absolutely. And look, I tell my mom all the time because we're so close in age. When you're 85, I'm going to be 70. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to help you. We're going to have to depend on my kids. But when I had small children, my grandmother would come over and help me with the laundry or help me with the kids just so that I could get stuff done around the house. And that would be ideal. That's the way it should be. I keep telling my children, don't have kids, number one, until you have a husband, but also so I can be in a position to help you because it's really hard out here, even if you're at home. And so I, my heart goes out to these women who's trying to do both because it's extremely hard. I laugh with my daughter who will be 28 in March. And we were just talking the other day at 28, I was married. I had my second child on the way and she she doesn't even seem close, but she wants to now get married. And I'm like, girl, time is running out because she doesn't have the passion that I do say for this job or that for some people have for their job. She's a bartender and that's not something that she wants to do for the rest of her life. And she went to school for psychology. I knew she wasn't going to use it when she was going, but She's not passionate about that. Now the instincts are kicking in that she wants to be a wife and she wants to be a mom because that's really what we should aspire to do. That should be the first thing. But instead we kind of got turned around that the first thing is to actually be a boss and to be in charge and to make money and compete with men. And men don't want anybody that's trying to compete with them. You have so many men that have bought into the whole, you know, I need a woman that's got her own. But then so many times they're insecure by that. And that's not even what they're looking for because they have to realize their nature is to provide. Their nature is to protect. And when you have a woman who's not interested in you in any of those areas, it makes a man feel some kind of way. So if we could both as men and women get back to our natural roles and people talk against traditional roles all the time, but it works and it works best. And if we would stop lying to ourselves, we would actually get to see that and see the fruit that that would produce, which is much better people than what we are producing and raising in, in this generation now. Thank you, Shamika. Great job. If you like this uh, content, hop in the comments, tell us what you think about the young woman and her anxiety. Maybe you disagree with Shamika and I, uh, would love to hear from you. Uh, if you really like this content and wanna see more of this style, support one of our great sponsors like Patriot Mobile, my mobile phone provider. Patriot Mobile shares our values, supports free speech, the second amendment, uh, their pro-life. Patriot Mobile, just go to patriotmobile.com slash Jason or call 878-PATRIOT. Help us grow the fearless army. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with all of your fearless friends.